used up a gapping tool for these spark plugs, I heard. Or they said that these are pre-gapped, but I'm gonna double check just to make sure. Because the Accord does kind of idle a little funny. So I'm gonna slap these in there and see what happens. The head studs did show up, but super freaking late, about 15 minutes ago. Five, 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 baby. There we go. Let's check them out. Come on, action clutch. Throw a sticker in, bro. It's tight. Fork specs. Lubricant. And here is the ARP. So I'm not quite sure how you torque these all down with the down the wrench, but I do and I will gonna be doing some research on how this all goes. And hopefully it just uh, has info on here. But I'll also watch the videos to make things a lot easier for me so I don't mess this up. So I believe you throw a lubricant on the bottom, maybe the top. You thread that bad boy in, throw on the washers, Lay these guys on top, and we're good. So we're good to put the head back on. What do you think, toolbox or car? Toolbox it is. So we finally have the rear main seal. The rear main seal itself. Looks pretty legit. This is the same company I have for the head gasket and all the gaskets that I got earlier on. There's a gasket here. We have two upper control arms. Uh, I've noticed every time I jack my car up and I'm uh, lowering or raising the car, the coil over, that one of these will sag more than the other side. And the other side's pretty tight upward. So I'm guessing that could be one of the causes for the shaking of the steering wheel. And I've never replaced it. I don't know why it's one of the easiest things you can do. But once I get the uh, coilovers that come in, I'm gonna do all this together, throw it in the video for you. More pieces to the puzzle.
All right, so I got these tightened down pretty good with the uh, Allen wrench. And I've noticed that most of them sit uneven. Like these sit higher than these two. This one looks lower than this one. That's the lowest one in the middle. And these all seem to be pretty flush on this side. So I think that's kind of weird. Uh, there was oil down below inside of these wells. So maybe that's the cause of it, but I'm guessing as soon as you crank these all down, they're all gonna sit to where they need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it, see what happens. I've been dreading this part for the longest time. These guys are hissing a little bit and making some noise. So I'm curious if some air bubbles are coming out and I'm allowed to push those down a little further. I might give them another crank and see what happens. But now I need to figure out which way this bad boy goes. All right, now watch me struggle as I try to put this head gasket back on and try to slide the head back on. I went ahead and pulled the studs out a little further and still all these other outside ones are sitting pretty even. That one back there is sitting a lot lower than the rest. You see there? Well, these guys are sitting pretty good and that's all hand tight. That one just went down super easy. So I can either back it up so it's all even or just leave it like that. Not too bad. That's great to see it back together again though. So now, we torque it down. I need to follow these directions and then we'll be good to go. I just need to look up the uh, sequence. Each one I gotta hit in order and we will be official. All right, I went ahead and greased everything else up. 
So these are good to go to drop in. Anybody's worried if I'm doing anything wrong with any of this assembly? It's all right. I expect myself to uh, make mistakes because that is the only way I will learn for the future. So nothing, uh, nothing here is going to surprise me. If something goes bad, I'm not going to freak out. For it. I'm just going to figure out what went wrong and what I should be doing the next time around. I don't think this is going to be my, my last motor build. This is all just a big test. Okay, all the washers are down. We're on these 12 points. Shout out to AJ Imports for responding back to me on all the questions I have with the headsets too. I was asking a few things on those studs sitting up a little higher than normal. It's great to have input from someone. Give you a final look before I start torquing these down. I just set these on top. And then I'm gonna find the correct way to uh, tighten these down on who goes first and who goes last. I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten these for now. And I'll look up what comes after. These are 14. So I went ahead and drew this out. This is gonna be the sequence for torquing it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. First time at 30, second time at 60, and then 90. Some people freak out online about 90, but you gotta go for what ARP you want. So I'm gonna do that, get her locked in. hitting 30 then bouncing back to 29. I don't know if that's exactly how it's supposed to work. Like I say, that's good if it's staying like that.
right, so I just finished it up with 90, 30, 60, then 90. But for some reason, that didn't feel right. It just doesn't feel like I'm tightening it. This will light up red, but it won't stay solid, which makes me kind of second guess. But I'm gonna go ahead and redo these one more time to make sure they're at 90. Tell me what you guys think. officially back on all I have to do now is figure out what the torque specs are for these freaking studs that gave me hell and then the cams go on and we continue uh oh it's a little tight there buddy all right that's better he's had to give it a little wiggle but yeah it, uh, it just felt weird I don't know it's my first time tightening these down it felt weird, but that could just be normal. So 30, 60, then 90. Let me know if that torque wrench was wrong. I did calibrate the torque wrench before I set the foot pounds and did the torque specs. But also we'll see. Make mistakes, learn from those mistakes. So, Tranny needs to come off, rear seal needs to go in, and then I was thinking, if I get it, when I get it tuned, I might just use the crappy clutch that's in it, because that one has to be broken in, and I don't know, if I can get some sort of base tune to just cruise around and break that in, I might do that, and then I come back and get it retuned. That'd be the, be the best bet, just so I don't have to take out the tranny while it's in the car. I think I'll do that. Base tune, cruise, get it drivable, break that in, set it up to come back and retune. Oh, and another update. I didn't get any uh, responses for that coilover giveaway, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sell them to the kid that ended up wrecking his white accord. So those will be going to that guy. Maybe next time we'll do another giveaway and somebody actually might need some coils. Well, I guess he does need coils, so it kind of worked out. I should have hit him up first before I did a little giveaway though. But future giveaways will be happening because I got to help out any CB drivers because that's what it's about. If you drive a cord, join the club, baby. One more thing. If you guys haven't seen, I do have hoodies available. Go to my Instagram link in there in the bio. Click on that and you can grab yourself one of these with a nice retro Accord Club on the back here. It's got a cool fade. 
Got a nice double stitch on the hood here. Two up through the middle. It's a wide hood. Metal tabs. I love the back though, that's sick. And then on the front of, of your heart, right across your heart, we got the H22 block, represent the four chambers of your heart. There it is, super clean. Came out real nice. And these are available, so. Thank you for everybody that's already picked one up. Let's keep it going. This was actually sitting in my P.O. box for a while. Expect to see more photos with this on. Cleanest design, simple.